I'd like to call this meeting of the Westland City Council to order, please. We'll begin with the Pledge of Allegiance tonight, led by Braxton Orsett and Amelia Rawls, two students from Hamilton Elementary. I pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the flag, flag of the United, United States, States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If you'll stay right there, Councilman Hammonds will be right down to talk to you for a minute. Nice job. Come on up here. Today we have with us Amelia Rawls, and she is in, uh, a fourth grade student in Mrs. Eberhardt's class at Hel uh, Hamilton. Her birthday is April 3rd, and she has one pet dog named Squiggy. Did you name the pet? Who named him, Mom? Um, we, when we got him, we just kept his name the way it was from the Humane Society. From the Humane Society. Okay, that's an interesting dog name. It says your favorite uh, thing about school is seeing your friends. It says here your favorite subject is writing, and when you grow up, you plan on being a veterinarian. Um, why do you want to do that? Because I just heard that if you're a doctor, you can get a lot of money. <laughs> See, doing it for the money, huh? You, what's your favorite animal? Like that. <laughs> Wolf, specifically. Wolf, okay, all right. Uh, it says, when you're um, not in school, your favorite thing is to draw on your Kindle. I just want to say thank you for coming out here and leading us in the pledge tonight. And here is your certificate. <clears throat> That's on behalf of the uh, city council, the mayor, and our clerk. So thank you for coming out. And we're going to have uh, Ms. Michael say a couple things about you and your school. Thank you for having us. Um, I'm very proud to be here with Amelia. I'm lucky enough to have been her kindergarten teacher as well, and now her principal. And we talked a little bit today. She's decided that maybe she doesn't want to be a vet. She may want to be an author. So I've offered to be on her first book tour. So I do think that we'll see great things from, Ham from Amelia and the, all the other students at Hamilton. So thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Roll call, please. Councilwoman Green. Present. Councilman Hart. Here. Councilman Hammonds. Here. Councilman Herzberg. Here. Councilman Johnson. Here. Councilman Londo. Here. President Godbaum. Present. A quorum is present. We'll begin with announcements and special presentations. Mayor. Yes, the uh, city clerk, Councilman President. We're going to make a uh, um, Presentation to our, our outgoing state representative, Robert Kozowski. So if there's anybody else that I didn't call that has a uh, uh, resolution or recognition or anybody that just wants to say a couple of words on his behalf, uh, maybe join me in front of the city emblem there. All right, so we're going to take a few minutes tonight before uh, tonight's city council meeting to uh, recognize uh, Bob Kozowski and the work that he's done on behalf of the citizens of Westland and also the citizens of Wayne. But uh, tonight, Bob, we want to uh, take a few minutes just to recognize you. You've worked, uh, and you've done an incredible job representing the city of Westland. Uh, you've been able to, uh, Bob's one of the rear politicians in Lansing that has been able to work both sides of the aisle. And I think that our city has, uh, seen the fruits of some of his uh, labor. We've been able to bring back uh, money in just about every uh, 
state budget to, uh, to make a lot of improvements. We've funded a lot of uh, improvements in recreation at the Jefferson Barnes uh, Community Vitality Center and this year, actually on the agenda tonight, I, I think it's, it's on tonight, but if not, I know that Bob was actually able to just to bring another $100,000 home that, that we're gonna be uh, utilizing. So with that, Bob, there's a lot of people that want to uh, say a few words, but um, I have a key to the city uh, uh, in recognition of your six years of patriotic and meritorious service representing the city of Westland and the Michigan House of Representatives. Bob, on behalf of the citizens of Westland, we want to say congratulations, good job, and best wishes in the future. Thank you very much. Bob, it's uh, my honor on behalf of the city council to present you with this plaque in recognition of your patriotic and meritorious service as three terms as our state representative. Uh, but your, your work for the city it, it goes back a long ways, back to when you were the Parks and Rec Director as well. And you always give 100% and we truly appreciate the efforts and, and all the work that you've done, particularly at the state level, uh, helping out the city as best you can, uh, particularly on the funding mechanisms. And we know it's a, a hornet's nest there and uh, we appreciate all that you've done uh, on behalf of the city. I just want to say uh, to my seatmate, um, you know, it's been a, a phenomenal time sitting next to you, letting you uh, rub some of that magic off on me. Uh, we've had some, some rough days and we had some really good days. Uh, so I've seen them uh, very happy and I've also been uh, around when we've been a little sad. And, you know, it's just been an honor knowing you. Uh, and I know this isn't the end of our journey together, but uh, just thanks for everything that you do for uh, your district and even over in uh, some parts of mine, like in Garden City. Uh, this is Mad Dog Kozowski here, so I got to learn a lot from him, but I also learned a lot from some of my citizens about him. And so uh, you're just a great man, and it's just been an honor knowing you so far. Congratulations. You know, it's tough to be the last one, so, but uh, all, 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 all the good things been mentioned about you, and I add to that. You know, when you got elected in the first term, I congratulate you uh, for being elected. But today I wanna congratulate you on the job well done. Because really, truly, it's, Bob, you've been the true state representative any district dream to have. You always answer our call. You always tackle with the issue we're facing. And as the mayor mentioned, and every budget, you care about your district and you bring money. And I uh, want to present you this resolution on my behalf, in behalf of Glenn Anderson. You know, we split Westland. Uh, so I like to take over the whole city, but, uh, <laughs> but <laughs> that tell you how much I love Wayne and Westland been working together uh, for a long time. In fact, we used to be one municipality. At heart, we still one municipality. And uh, you don't know how much we appreciate your job. And we didn't see the, the end of you yet. Mm -hmm. So we're waiting for the sunrise from the other side. Thank you. Representative Kozowski. So about three days shy of eight years ago, I got a call from Bob Kozowski, our Parks and Recreation Director. I had just been elected to my final term in the House, and Bob says, I really want to run for that spot. Can we talk about it? I am so, I did not say no. <laughs> I am so pleased that you were able to serve, that you were able to serve the maximum amount of terms in the House but more than that, I, I'm really especially pleased at what you brought back to town, just like the others have indicated. You know, it's, um, it's a challenge there. And you had a challenge more difficult than I did. You served in the minority. And you still, as the mayor said, worked both sides of the aisle, brought it home for us here in, in town. I think that you've been an impressive state representative. And I want to say I'm so pleased that you were able to do that on our behalf, and we thank you for your service. Well, thank you, everyone. I really don't deserve all this, but thank you so much. You know, it's been a great honor serving all the residents of Westland. I wouldn't take it back.
two, three. Thank you. Good job, Bob. Mary? Hello, everyone. Thank you so much, Mayor and City Council, for having me. And wow, to follow that, it's going to be a little bit tough. And um, just to say, Bob kazowski has been a longtime friend and such a just such a charm and a hard worker and he has a heart for our community so I wish him well but um to talk about relay I know everybody's thinking oh my god this early it's only November but we start we start September 1st for 2019 so we really want to exceed um, our expectations um, just to tell you a little bit um, that we actually were considered a pacemaker, uh, pace setter, not pacemaker, pace setter um, for uh, 2018, uh, our Relay for Life. And that means that we exceeded our goal. Our goal was 50,000. So we were uh, almost at the 53,000 mark. So we were pretty happy about that. And we're hoping to start off uh, the new uh, season of Relay in the right way. So what we decided to do was do a pizza pull and it's at the City Hall on 20, uh, November 13th, 6.30 to 8.30. It's going to be really cool. We've invited uh, pizza places uh, in our community to come and bring pizza. It's $10 to get in if you want to put that towards a credit towards a team that you would like to uh, support. If not, it goes directly to our West Side Wayne Relay for Life. And you get all the food you can eat. And then you can decide on which pizza you think is the best. And now we're having a great, also um, uh, in a different way, having fun on a, what's called a quarter uh, raffle, uh, where you can win some really great prizes. Um, so we would appreciate everybody is welcome, and we would love to see everybody there uh, to support. Um, it, like you always do, we are so thankful about the community support, mayor, city council, di directors. I mean, there's just so many people that we are thankful to, and we hope it continues. We really appreciate that. And I also just want to mention a quick uh, Friends of the Library. Uh, um, Westland uh, Library is having our book sale in November, and that actually is uh, the week, um, a couple days after uh, our Pizza Palooza starts on uh, the 15th and uh, to the public it's on the 16th if you're a member um, you can come and uh, have first crack at our books on the 15th or join as a member and then it's open to the public the rest of the week uh, we're encouraging that sale to be um, you know if you want to purchase gifts uh, for the holiday uh, anybody you can think of our book bags are three dollars they're really great bags that you can re recycle reuse um, that make uh, really great gift bags. And uh, so any support that you can give us in that way uh, for the library, we really appreciate it. Thank you so much this evening for having me. We'll move on to citizens' questions or input on the agenda. Citizens will be recognized before the business of the meeting commences to address the council pertaining to items that are specifically on the business agenda. Citizens are asked to limit their questions or input to three minutes. Is there anyone on my left? Anyone on my right? Anyone in the audience? Mr. Warren. This is in regards to item E under the consent calendar, the approval of the gov intergovernmental agreement between the city and the county of Wayne in regards to park enhancements for Stoudemire and Firefighters Park. Uh, I don't know whether this $9,000 is to be split to $4,500 or is it $9,000 for each park? I uh, don't have an idea what these enhancements are going to be. And uh, so I would be opposed to the council. The council should table this until get some clarity on exactly what these enhancements are going to be. Um, in previous council meetings, you did 
uh, table some issues in regard to just the cost of um, signs. So I think the administration should um, find some clarity in regards to what these enhancements will be for, particularly for firefighters park, because I know there's only two pieces of equipment that are major over there. There's a playscape and, and two swings over there. So I would like to know what those enhancements are. They don't have to be answered tonight, but uh, I think that you should table this until we get an answer how this uh, $9,000 will be spent for, in regards to enhancements. Thank you. Anyone on my right? Anyone on my left? Anyone else on the agenda items? We'll close citizens' comments and move on to the consent calendar. Is there a motion? So motion by Councilman Herzberg, supported by Councilman Londa. Is there... <coughs> Mayor? I can take a swing at uh, Mr. Warren's question, if you'd like. Sure. So this is a requirement that, that's required from the county. We're kind of up, up against the, the deadline on getting this done. Um, so the county, at this point, the $9,000 that you referred to, that is the portion of the, um, of the Wayne County Parks, <clears throat> the Wayne County Parks millage money that Congress, that Commissioner Game, game almost gave him a, a bump in pay there. Commissioner Haddis uh, brings back to the city. The only two parks that that money can be utilized for were the two that were said, Stottermeyer or, or Firefighters Park. Um, there is, as part of the, <laughs> I'm getting additional information here. There actually is, uh, what, what's, there's already, it's part of the council agenda um, items that have already been chosen for those parks. And I think this is something that that um, Brian Harno's kind of get finished before he left. So um, this isn't the things that you're thinking. This th th when when you look at this, these are things like 55 gallon trash receptacles, um, rotating pedest the pedestrian grills, uh, park benches. So these these are uh, kind of the smaller amenities as far as um, where they're going to be located in the park. We, we can work with them on that. But at the end of the day, we've got to kind of use this money before we can't, we don't want to lose it. So hopefully that answers his, his questions. If if not, you know, as far as we're, how we're going to split those up, I think it's in the packet. Actually, Steve Smith was actually supposed to talk on this, not me. I kind of jumped in here. But Steve, did, you, did I miss anything or did I state anything wrong or? Yeah, everything good. Okay. Good answer. <laughs> Is there any discussion from the council? Any discussion? Any dissent? Any? Councilwoman Green? Item, um, I make a motion to move item C and D to new business as item 1A and 1B for discussion. Motion to move the maker and supporter of the motion. Agreement. Okay. Move items C and D. To item one A and B. Or any other discussion? Any other discussion? Any dissent? Any dissent? Hearing no dissent, motion carries unanimously. Council has approved the following consent calendar items: minutes of the regular meeting held October 15, 2018. Approval of proposal from the sole provider for audio system tuning equipment, administration recommended SVT in the amount of $22,932.72. C and D have been moved. Item E, approval of intergovernmental agreement between the County of Wayne and the City of Westland to utilize park millage funding from fund year 2017-2018 in the amount of $9,000 for enhancements to the equipment at Stottlemyre and Firefighters Park. The mayor and city clerk are authorized to execute on behalf of the city. Approval of intergovernmental agreement between the County of Wayne and the City of Westland to utilize 
park millage funding from fund year 2017-2018 in the amount of $41,469 for enhancements to the equipment at Stottlemyre and Firefighters Park. The mayor and city clerk are authorized to execute on behalf of the city. Introduction of Manpower Budget Amendment 2019-01, Building Department, Add Building Director, Pay Grade 2, Decrease Building and Planning Director, Pay Grade 1B. Introduction of Ordinance 203Q1, an ordinance to adopt Chapter 102, Article 5, Section 102.235 of the Westland City Code to eliminate illicit discharge into the storm drainage system. Adoption of Ordinance 248A87, an ordinance to amend Ordinance 248 to show CB3 district classification where CB2 is now shown in the area in the area situated in the city of Westland, commonly known as 165 South Wayne Road. Planning Department number 2216. This item was introduced October 15, 2018. Adoption of Ordinance 248A88, an ordinance to amend Ordinance 248 to show CB3 district classification, where R5 is now shown in the area situated in the city of Westland, commonly known as 27454 Van Bourne. Planning Department number 2217. This item was introduced October 15, 2018. Adoption of Ordinance 248A89, an ordinance to amend Ordinance 248 to show CB1 district classification, where R5 is now shown in the area in the area situated in the city of Westland, described as parcels number 5603499. 0016004, and 0021001. Planning Department number 1632C. This item was introduced October 15, 2018. Adoption of Land Division Resolution, parcel number 5602804. 0042000 and 02804-0046000, west side of Executive Drive, east side of Hicks Road, north of Ford. This item was approved by Council May 21, 2018. Last item on the consent calendar, approval of transfer of hazards and board ups to the property taxes for the winter 2018 tax bills. We'll now move to new business. A moment here. And so we'll go to item 1A, approval of extension of non-exclusive motor vehicle towing and storage contract with Westland Car Care. The contract extension is for an additional five years beyond the expiration of the current contract on December 18, 2020. And if approved, authorizes the mayor and city clerk to sign the contract on behalf of the city. Motion by Councilman Hart, supported by Councilman Hammonds. Is there any discussion? Councilwoman Green? Yes, thank you, Council President. Um, I, my question is, the current contract does not expire until December 18th, 2020, which is two years from, approximately two years from today. And I did ask uh, to review the current contract that would give him um, or extend him through December of 2025, which is a seven year period from today, from this year. Um, and I also asked to review his existing contract. Um, that contract was not provided. I wanted to compare the differences in terms of the, this extended contract and what he, the contract that he's currently under. Um, it was not placed in the council packet that we received and it is not in the council lounge. One of the questions that I have is why are we doing an additional five year extension through 2025 when his, contra his current contract is good for another two years and if it is something that would need to be uh, locked in and renegotiated, I would think that we should wait um, I'm not in favor of these extensive contracts that contractors continue to come into City Hall and unless there's some type of urgent or dire uh, reason 
I, I, that does not make sense to me. And if it is from a cost standpoint, or we're trying to lock in some sort of cost, which I have no idea because that information was not provided to council. Um, if it is due to cost, then I think that we should explore options to make sure that the city gets the best buy for our dollar two years from now. But I would like that clarified. Also under, on page one of the, of the contract under section one term, the last sentence states that the contract may also be terminated upon 14 days written notice to the contractor if in the sole discretion of the mayor, the contractor has breached any term or condition of the agreement. So basically, the city of Westland would be bound to this contract through December of two, uh, two, 2025 unless he breaches. And there are there is a cost um, portion that says that we're going to give him the consumer, consumer price index plus one percent every year, and then we're paying for time and materials as opposed to the actual job. Um, so. So th this could uh, it basically leaves us open for more, depending on what the call is for, for um, extensive uh, fees to come in because this just says time and materials as opposed to X amount per tow or X amount per, you know, whatever the situation is. So I would like clarity on those. Thank you. Councilman Johnson. Thank you. Um, I, I too, and, and I've expressed this, I, I have a hard time with these long, long extended contracts. Uh, when I first came on council, all these contracts had to be renewed on an annual basis. Um, it, it's becoming the norm now, it's five, 10, seven, whatever it is. Um, and, and I understand there's no cost to the city. These, these rates that are being exposed in there are for the people you actually do the towing for. I believe that's correct. We don't pay any of those fees, correct? Yep, so my, 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 my major thing is there's no dollars from the city. Uh, I have a major problem uh, with the repeated long-term contracts. I know that uh, Mr. Holland has done a good job, uh, worked well with, with the PD. Um, it's just the length of contracts. I'm going to go with this one because I know you do a good job and, and we actually don't pay you anything. Uh, all the, the tow fees are from people whose cars you tow. But I'm going to be real hard to impress to get me to vote on another extended contract. This will be the last one I vote in favor of. It just doesn't make sense for these long-term contracts. Uh, uh, I'm not opposed to this one because I know it doesn't cost the city a dime. Uh, you get your money and you work well with the PD, but going forward, I will not be voting in favor of any more long-term contracts. Thank you. Mr. Fasson. Yes, I just wanted to uh, point out for those who don't have the contract in front of them that uh, this contract is terminable uh, immediately if there's an insurance issue, if there is a lapse in insurance, as well as being terminable on four days, 14 days notice for breach of the contract. And finally, this is a non-exclusive contract, so the city could at any time enter into a contract with another uh, towing company and direct the, the uh, traffic in that direction. So um, just, just to put some frame around the uh, term of the contract. Thank you. Is there anyone else on the, Mr. Smith, did you have something on it? No? Okay. I have one other excuse me. Excuse me, there's other people first. Uh, Chief? Yeah, thank you to the chair. I just wanted to quickly say, in, in regards to the police department, it, um, we've been using Westland Car Care for as long as I can remember. Beyond my 24-year police career, we've always had a great relationship with Westland Car Care. They've been responsive to our police department's needs. He's always got reliable employees, top quality equipment. But beyond that, at no cost to the city of Westland, he provides a secure storage facility on his property that only the police department have access to and that saves the city quite a bit of money for us to be able to use that as an evidence storage area so i just wanted to make that point that police department is always had an excellent relationship and uh, we really appreciate what west Side car care has done for the city councilwoman green yes thank you and i appreciate um the input from 
uh, counsel and the police chief. Uh, this information was not disclosed when we got the packet. Um, however, my question tonight was not answered. What is the reason that we're taking a contract that still has two years left and offering basically from today, we're going to extend it out seven years? What, what is the, why, why are we doing that? Do you want to, do you want to address it? Sure. Yeah. Come up to the. Good evening, council. Uh, through the chair, I hope I'm approaching this the right way. Uh, I've been doing this most of my life. Uh, my business partner, Tony Morocco, I am now going to be buying out his percentage of the company. Underwriting has been very diligent in their qualification of my purchasing the percentage of my partner's, uh, percentage of my partner's owning the company. And they are looking at, as a 10-year note, that they want a 10-year extension, which would qualify me to be able to do this. And that's really the main purpose of, of well, the first part of it, that's the main purpose of why I need to do this. Secondary is I'm going to have to make a large investment uh, in the spring in updating my equipment. Um, as uh, the chief knows and most of the city officials know, uh, I, I update my equipment constantly so that I can provide the service exceptional. Uh, I, I need to provide a service that is second to none, which is what I've done all through the years. So that's my, those are my primary two reasons of why I need to do this. Thank you. Councilman Hart. Yeah, thank you. Uh, through the chair to uh, Mr. Holland. Uh, I just wanted to uh, ask you a couple questions too with regards to uh, us knowing your purposes. I think it's spelled out in our council contract on page 29, paragraph two. Uh, are these your words as co-owner? I'm currently securing financing to buy out my partner shares of our company. It's been conveyed that bank underwriting would also see a contract extension as it would look very favorable in securing funds. In addition, I will also be replacing some of our fleet after buyout after transaction is complied, uh, completed. Those were your words, correct? More eloquently than I just <laughs> stated it, so Councilman I just want Hart. to make sure I read what was in the packet <laughs> appropriately. Um, yes. Also, I do understand, I've, I appreciate the chief actually also supplied in our packet a letter of recommendation explaining not only what you've been doing for the city for the past 24 years, but some of the uh, intangibles uh, that we don't really see in the contract and of course uh, providing some of your additional property that was instrumental in us uh, achieving our CALEA certification that's also correct is that right yes sir thank you um you're also a, a resident here in the city of westland and you own property here in the West, city of westland and you have for a long time so i thank you for your continued support in the city and i'll be supporting your contract extension today thank you thank you councilman londa thanks uh, you mentioned updating the equipment. That's going to be at your cost, not the city's cost, correct? Yes. Thank you. Councilwoman Green? Oh, no, I'm all set. Okay. Is there anyone else on the council? Any further discussion? Any further discussion? Uh, I just wanted to say, you know, uh, I'm in support of the contract extension. Uh, Westland Car Care has been uh, the, the contractor on record for as long as I can remember, and I've been around as uh, probably as long as the chief or, or, or longer. Uh, you've always done an outstanding job. The, the company, uh, as you said, you're you're a resident of the city. You own four or five buildings. In four the, locations. Four locations within the city. Uh, and the last time we did bid this out, uh, they were by far the uh, the recommended and the and the best choice for for that process uh, in regards to redo several contracts. Uh, and, and I don't know that it's ever been a one year towing contract that we've had uh, in, in the past. It's always been multiple year contract for towing. Uh, and, and all this extension does is basically continue the, the existing operation, uh, but provide the banks with the, uh, the material from a, a contract length to uh, allow you to acquire the funding necessary to, to continue the operation and to grow the operation. So uh, I will be supporting it as well. Roll call, please. Councilwoman Green. Yes. Councilman Hammonds. Yes. Councilman Hart. Yes. Councilman Herzberg. Yes. Councilman Johnson. Yes. Councilman Londo. Yes. President Gombo. Yes. Motion passes unanimously.
Thank you. New business, item 1B. Approval of short-term agreement with McKenna Associates for professional and technical planning advisory services. Is there a motion? So, motion by Councilman Londo. Is there support? Support. Support by Councilman Hammonds. Is there any discussion? Councilwoman Green? Yes, thank you. Um, for item number D, the proposed six-month contract in our packet is a contract that was written by McKenna as opposed to the City of Westland having a contracted employee sign our contract. After speaking with Steve Smith, um, he did make me aware that this particular employee uh, is going to work for the city, from what I understand, three days a week at seven hours a day for a total of 21 hours a week. However, the way that the contract is written on um, <coughs> under compensation section nine, it states that his out, it states the retainer that we're going <coughs> to pay up front which I have no issue with that, nor the hourly rate. However, when you continue down to item number one, um, it states fees that can go uh, all the way up to $700 uh, per uh, occurrence or per um, job that he's going to do. For example, it states that if the preliminary plot review for tentative approval is $700 plus $20 per lot. That's in addition to his hourly rate of $85 to $90 an hour. Um, and the way that it is written is any of the items under item one and two would subject the city to an additional fee. However, I asked Steve before the meeting uh, to clarify this, and he stated that it is, it, we would only be subject to these charges if the gentleman performed any of these duties outside of his 21 hour contracted week, work week. So if he were to work more than 21 hours and then have to take on any of these responsibilities, uh, that again could be five, six, seven hundred dollars per uh, task, that we would not be subjected to that if he were to do it here at City Hall during the three days. Um, so I would like to see that added to the contract because the way that this is written is stating that if he just does this, unless the city attorney can point out somewhere in the contract that it states uh, what Steve Smith told me, which is if he performs this outside of his contract at work week. Um, and again, I'm just asking for clarity because this contract is a McKenna contract. Now, I'm not sure why we would sign a contract of the company that we're going to do business with as opposed to them signing ours. However, if that is the case, we should not be subjected to him doing the, the job that the previous building director did under normal circumstances unless it is, in fact, what Steve said, if it occurs outside of his uh, three-day work week. Thank you. Mr. Fasson. Thank you. Um, so this contract was dr drafted both by McKenna and my office. Uh, it follows a format of a contract that the city has with McKenna, uh, has entered into previously. Um, <clears throat> uh, this contract specifically is for a six month period and either party may terminate this contract without cause uh, during that six months on 30 days written notice. So. In, in opposition, if you will, to the last item that you looked at in terms of long-term contracts, this is a very short-term contract in, in that regards for these professional services. Um, uh, my understanding of this contract is that there are on-site services, but there may well be um, extra outside services not done here at the office and maybe not even done by uh, uh, Greg Elliott who's being proposed as a city planner and may be done by somebody else at McKenna on those uh, various types of reviews. Thus, you have different compensation schemes for where and who is doing the work. So if he's doing the work here um, during that period of time, uh, that work does not trigger those other payment schemes. If he's been asked to do that work or other people in McKenna have been asked to do that type of work, 
then it may trigger different payment schemes under uh, Section 9 compensation. Um, I know Mr. Smith has worked on this. To, you, you've already set a budget for this position and a dollar amount in your budget for this position. I can't comment on how all the numbers work out because those are business terms, uh, financial terms, and I think that's something that uh, finance has worked on, so I'd, I'd leave it to them. Mayor? Yeah, th thank you, uh, Council President. Thank you, uh, Mr. Foss. So I think, I think the city attorney summed it up pretty well. Um, John Jackson from McKenna is in the audience tonight, and he is, the gentleman that is with him is Greg Elliott. Uh, Greg is gonna be our proposed city planner and um, would like to introduce them to council. And as, as Mr. Fasson had mentioned, it's a short-term contract, obviously, uh, with the retirement of Bruce, uh, Bruce Thompson, a uh, very key position in our administration. Um, Mr. House has been trying to, uh, to keep the ship floating, but we didn't hire him to be a planner. He's not a planner. So um, this gives us a chance to uh, you know, take, utilize McKenna services. McKenna actually, is a city planner for, for multitude cities uh, in Michigan, so it's nothing new for them. While it is something new for us, um, we'll definitely uh, make sure that we get the city's money's worth out of Mr. Elliott on his three days that are, that are here. And plus on top of that, he'll also be um, attending all the meetings that the city planner needs to attend. Um, so with that, uh, we could certainly let Mr. Jackson uh, weigh in on, on the, the contract and also uh, Mr. Elliott as well. To the chair, of course, sorry. Thank you very much, and we appreciate the opportunity to come before council tonight. Um, <clears throat> we're excited about this opportunity. We, we've worked at length with the city. We've worked with Bruce in the past uh, in the planning department. Uh, we understand that uh, there's high expectations uh, for the planning department. It's, uh, it, the department is basically the front line for development that comes into the city. And so that there, there are high expectations and we expect to exceed those in terms of customer service uh, and expedited plan reviews and things of that nature. The way we, we put the contract together was in an effort to offer the city maximum flexibility. Uh, we don't know exactly what the volume of activity is gonna be. Um, so it might not be three days uh, of office hours. It might be uh, two days, it might be four days, depending on the, the amount of business. Um, you've had a full-time person in this position in the past. So um, again, we, we, we put the contract together so that we can adjust and be flexible with respect to how, how uh, these costs are incurred. Also, the $700 uh, charge that uh, was referenced to, um, that is basically um, uh, an application fee that would be passed through to developer uh, that came in. So, um, you know, again, we're trying to make sure that the city has a direct relationship between revenue and expenditures, uh, as well as the opportunity to adjust the levels of service based on volume of activity. So that's the way we structured the contract the way it is. Um, uh, with that, I wanna quickly introduce Greg Elliott, uh, who's been with us for a number of years and has worked in similar capacities with other communities that uh, have similar high expectations. Um, and we feel he'll be a good fit here. Uh, he was with us on Saturday when we had a uh, charrette over at Westland Mall to look at you know, what the future holds for uh, the TIFA district. Uh, and we know that the city is in a position right now to take advantage of some great opportunities. And so now's uh, sort of a, a uh, an important time for the city, and I think Greg's a good person to be here at that time. So, Greg? Uh, good evening, Mayor and members of council. I'm very excited to, to be here. Uh, as uh, John said, uh, this is something uh, similar to what I've done in the past a few years ago. I guess back in 2015, uh, West Bloomfield was in a similar situation where their, uh, where their uh, planning director had left, and we came in and, in the form of me and filled that position. Uh, probably for about six months until they found a full-time uh, planner. Uh, and I did, I put in three uh, days a week of office hours there, uh, similar to what the expectation is here at least. And, and as uh, city attorney has described, it, it worked exactly that way. If 
if I did the work on site, then the on site rate would apply if for some reason the workload was such, it often was there, that uh, other members of the staff had to do it or I had to do it off site uh, back at the office, then the, then the review fees would apply. So I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have about me, but uh, I'm just excited about the opportunity to, to work with y'all. Mr. Faso? Uh, Mr. Elliott's being way too modest. I did uh, put in your packet, uh, Council, uh, his resume. Uh, not only does he have a Bachelor's of Arts from Alma College and a Master's of Public Administration from Eastern Michigan University, he graduated magna cum laude from Michigan State University College of Law uh, and has quite an impressive set of credentials and background. So uh, I think you're getting a highly talented individual who's being a little modest at the microphone. He, he's not going to take your job, though. I, <laughs> I'm just wondering if he's taking yours, John. <laughs> so, some days he can have it. <laughs> Councilman Johnson. Thank you. Uh, back to Councilwoman Green's question about the 700. Would you build a contractor, or would the city then build a, a contractor? Uh, we, would, we would bill the, the city, but typically that fee is paid ahead of time when an applicant comes to the city. So that fee is paid ahead of time, and then, uh, then we bill the city, and the city pays us from the fees that have been collected. So the city would collect from the contractor in advance? First, yes. Thank you. Councilwoman Green. I just wanted to say that I'm looking forward to uh, working with you, and McKenna has an excellent reputation. Um, I'm familiar with you uh, in other... Uh, outside of the city of Westland, so, you know, and you do great work for us. Uh, my question was relative to the way the contract is written, and when I review contracts and bids, and I totally separate any previous relationship that may be existing, um, and, you know, go at it from a, a standpoint of business is business. And so the contract, I just, I referenced the $700 one, but there's actually 15 additional costs for normal duties that um, um, Bruce did. And, and they're ranging anywhere from 300 all the way up to, I believe 750 is the highest. So that was my question because the contract does not, now you explaining that tonight is awesome, but a contract is what holds up in court. So the contract does not specify what, you are now stating, and in my opinion, any contract that we issue should spell out all of the terms so there's no misunderstanding, uh, especially when this is not a template City of Westland uh, contract. But again, I, I look forward to working with you, um, and I'll just keep my eyes on the invoices that comes in. And you'll see them every month. Thank you. Mr. Smith. <clears throat> yeah. Sure, through the chair. The, the fees that are on this schedule are also in the uh, city's ordinances to charge those fees ahead of time. So as we collect them, then they would bill us for them. So there is, it is a, a pass-through fee on all of those that are listed in the contract. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Smith. Is there any further discussion from the council? Any further discussion? Uh, I just want to say, and, and I appreciate McKenna helping us out during this transition time, and that's what this is. This is a, a six-month transition time to allow us to uh, go out and uh, get resumes and do the interview process to, to hire a full-time planner. So you guys do great work, and it's much appreciated that you guys stepped up realizing that that's what this contract really is all about, just a, a stopgap because of the, the load that continues to come in on a daily basis and through the planning department. So, thanks. Roll call, please. Councilwoman Green? Yes. Councilman Hammonds? Yes. Councilman Hart? Yes. Councilman Herzberg? Yes. Councilman Johnson? Yes. Councilman Londo? Yes. President Godbell? Yes. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you very much. You. New business item one, approval of Westland Post-Employment Benefits System Corrective Action Plan. Motion by Councilman Johnson, supported by Councilman Hart. Is there any discussion? <coughs> any discussion? Any dissent? Any dissent? Hearing no dissent, motion carries unanimously. 
New business item two, approval of MERS defined benefit pension retirement systems corrective action plan. So Motion by Councilman Landau, supported by Councilman Hart. Is there any discussion? Any discussion? Any dissent? Any dissent? Hearing no dissent, motion carries unanimously. New business item three, confirmation of appointment of Keith Lucenden, hope I said that right, as building director for the city of Westland, effective immediately. Motion by Councilman Johnson, supported by Councilman Hart. Is there any discussion? Mayor? Yes, thank you, Council President. Um, Council, because of the retirement of Bruce uh, Thompson, it's, it's required us to do a few things, and we, we just filled the shoes in the planning department. Uh, another duty that Bruce had done for us was he also was our building director. Um, so tonight what we're asking Council to do, and actually earlier in the consent calendar, item G was the introduction of a manpower budget amendment uh, which added the building to the building directors uh, to the administrative fee schedule. I'm sorry, yeah, to the mayor's the mayor's uh, appointed officials pay plan under pay grade number two. Uh, the gentleman that we are bringing to you tonight to uh, uh, confirm the appointment uh, we're hiring from within, uh, Mr. Keith Lessenden. Uh, he's with us here tonight, and uh, you have his resume. In your packet, I think that um, you'll see, just like uh, the gentleman before him, that he uh, has quite an extensive resume. Um, he's done similar work for the city of Royal Oak, uh, the city of Ann Arbor, and um, also the city of Dearborn. Uh, when you take a look at his uh, education and plus his uh, licenses and uh, certificates, uh, he's uh, certified in a litany of things, including uh, being a, you know, a master plumber and a residential builder. Um, he's, he's certified to do uh, fire inspections and, and the list goes on and on. So uh, we're certainly uh, gonna be us utilizing him to the, the, uh, the fullness of his capabilities. Uh, previously, um, Bruce Thompson kind of served as the building director um, on the administrative side and, and Keith, uh, was the building director on the inspection side. So with, with this uh, position, he'll be doing both of those duties. And then uh, um, a little bit later this year or beginning of January, he'll also be taking, uh, there's another contracted employee that's our building official of record that um, his services will no longer be needed. So that will uh, bring a little savings to the city and also add a little bit more to, uh, to Mr. Lessenden's plate. So. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, he is certainly well qualified. Uh, we've been extremely, extremely fortunate that we've been able to uh, kind of come through the recession and start to see the, the redevelopment of Westland with Bruce Thompson as our planner kind of serving that dual role. Dual role. But um, there's an incredible amount of building in the city, just, just if you look at the residential side. So certainly, uh, I think we got along without a uh, full-time building director as long as we could. And... Uh, Mr. Lusseden is, is here tonight. He's uh, the gentleman sitting here uh, next to Stephanie, and um, he certainly can try to answer any questions that you may have. He's certainly well qualified, and um, he's already doing a great job for us. Thanks. Councilwoman Green. Uh, yes, I have a, a question in reference to his... Mayor, you said that he's currently working for the city? Correct. Okay, because the resume that's included states that, I, the, the question that I wrote down was, his resume states that he worked as a chief building inspector for the city of Royal Oak for a period of six months from June of last year through January of this year. So I was just curious in terms of the, the short-lived role with Royal Oak. And I was not aware because it's not on his resume that he currently works for the city of Westland. Okay. Well, he's here tonight to answer any questions about his current duties or uh, his uh, vision for moving the department forward. Uh, the reason I think probably the resume is a little outdated is that's the resume that I submitted when I hired in. Um, as the, the planning and building supervisor. So uh, the fact that it doesn't include the present employment, is that's, that's the reason for that. 
So if the um, the other uh, reason why I was only in Royal Oak for such a short period of time is that was um, not a agreeable position for me at that time. Is there any further discussion from the council? Any discussion? <clears throat> any dissent? Any dissent? Hearing no dissent, motion carries unanimously. Congratulations. <laughs> New business item four, approval of voucher. Is there a motion? So moved. Motion by Councilman Herzberg. Is there support? support? Support by Councilman Landau. Is there any discussion? Any discussion? Any dissent? Any dissent? Hearing no dissent, motion carries unanimously. We'll move on to citizens' comments or requests. Citizens will be recognized at the end of the meeting immediately following the agenda item approval of vouchers. Citizens are asked to limit their comments to three minutes. All citizens wishing to speak will be heard. Is there anyone on my right? Mrs. McKinney? Not too long ago you had an ordinance about uh, newspapers being thrown in that. Well, it seems like the observer has decided to do it every week in a lot of neighborhoods. And since they're our city paper, I think it looks bad for us to have them doing this. And I'm not the only one. It's not just in my neighborhood. It's in other neighborhoods. So if you can do something about it, I'd appreciate it. Anyone on my left? Anyone on my right? Anyone else in the audience? We'll close citizens' comments and move on to comments from the administration. Mayor? All right. Well, thank you, City Council, uh, for a few things. First of all, for coming in tonight for a study session at 530. We appreciate uh, your time, and I know that you guys are busy, and, and you have uh, other jobs in uh, family matters. So we do appreciate you coming in early um, as we laid out the, um, the corrective action plans for both the MERS pension and the, uh, the OPEB as required by um, Public Act 202. So I appreciate that. We moved through a lot on the uh, the council agenda tonight. I do appreciate the appointment to uh, uh, to help us in an interim position uh, to uh, fill the planning vacancy and also with uh, um, appointing a, a building director. And, and I, I gave council notice that about a week or so ago that we also removed the interim label from Craig Brown as our IT director. And now he is officially the the city's um, IT director. So, <clears throat> I don't really call him the IT director anymore. He's actually our, our chief information officer. So, he's doing a great job, and uh, I appreciate that. Uh, and then tonight, I was just going to, you know, there's been a lot, a lot of stuff going on around the city lately. And I know that sometimes the residents, they, they like to hear uh, how hard folks are working for them. And, you know, just within the last couple of weeks, you know, the Halloween, uh, City Hall Halloween thing, there was 3,000 kids that went through City Hall, and um, I think it, everybody left uh, with a bag full of candy and, and a big smile on their face. It took a lot of people to pull off an event that magnitude, but um, the, over at the Jefferson Barnes Community Vitality Center, you know, just the week before that, there were over 1,000 kids that participated in the Oktoberfest. You know, just last week, uh, Barb Markham served uh, an incredible senior Thanksgiving luncheon to over 400 of our residents. Um, the Economic Development Department last week uh, hosted uh, the, the TIFA visioning sessions as we look at creating a city center in the, the Shop and Dine District. That took a lot of planning and, and a lot of people participated. You know, the plant brand got out of here, but they've been in the building for a long time. Uh, they actually just wrapped, recently wrapped up their audit. So uh, finance has been busy uh, working on that audit at the same time that they've been working on that uh, corrective action plan tonight. So they've been doing a lot of uh, double duty and, and working hard and working late. So I appreciate that. Um, you know, just a week, it's been almost two weeks now, the police department uh, rolled out body cameras on all their patrol officers and had a press conference here and it took a lot of uh, time and effort to uh, to make sure that rollout went smooth and 
I think Chief Jed Ruzik uh, handled that press conference very well, and um, I was proud of him, and I think that it went a long way to uh, restoring some confidence with, uh, with some of our communities. Um, at the same time, if you, if you caught the, uh, the headline in the West End Observer Sunday, um, they also captured and arrested an individual who uh, brutally attacked one of our small business owners in town, and they've got him uh, behind bars, and they did so in an extremely short period of time, so I appreciate their work. Our personnel department recently hosted an employee benefit fair here at City Hall, and um, it was a lot of work, extremely uh, um, time intensive because there were a lot of changes to our health care and uh, with the new hard caps from the state of Michigan. There was a lot of interest in the health savings accounts for our employees. It took a lot of time and a lot of people in, in the personnel department, I thought, did a great job on that and uh, also at the same time working uh, with my office uh, to collect resumes for uh, the open planning position and the recreation director. So I appreciate your hard work. Um, our library director, uh, who's been at a lot of our city meetings lately, I'd like to see that he's uh, become involved and very um, visible within the city, is currently negotiating uh, a first ever union contract for our library employees. And I know that he's uh, made it his top priority to, to get that wrapped up as quickly as possible. You know, our DPS crews um, are busy trying to wrap up their uh, neighborhood makeover work for the summer. And um, as long as, uh, you know, Mother Nature holds off, they're gonna continue working up at the same time. Uh, a good portion of their crews are working to uh, get the golf course shut down and also they got the, um, the H2O zone uh, winterized and um, they're also prepping their equipment for snow. I know people don't want to hear about that, but the salt dome is full and they're also are working to have that equipment ready. And then certainly last but not least, uh, the clerk and his office have been working uh, extremely hard lately. Um, I noticed that they're in here a lot on the weekends and stuff, getting ready for uh, what a lot of folks are calling a record setting election. So um, I want the residents of West End to be very proud of the, the people that, that work for you. They've been working really hard. We make sure that they do work hard. And I think that we probably don't recognize them enough for their hard work. So thank you. Anything from the city attorney's office? Nothing this evening. Thanks. We'll uh, start council comments with Councilwoman Green. Thank you, Council President. I would like to start by thanking the young lady who did the Pledge of Allegiance tonight. Uh, also, as the mayor stated, just a reminder, election day is tomorrow. Polls open from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. So please come out and uh, vote. And also, if anybody lacks transportation, Lyft and um, Uber, from what I understand, are having a national campaign for free transportation to the polls. So if you know someone who can't make it, please let them know about that uh, special offer for election day. I'd also like to congratulate the Westland Meteors. Uh, they won their junior varsity and varsity games over the weekend. So congratulations to them and they'll be moving on to their next phase uh, towards the championship. I uh, wanted to let everybody know that the um, annual bikes through the lights 2018 is going to occur. That's coming up on November 14th at 7 p.m. It is Wayne County Parks Light Fest. It's a 16 mile uh, round trip at eight miles each way. Light Fest that's gonna start um, at, in our city of Westland and at Hines Park. And the starting location is gonna be 7651 North Merriman. Again, that's coming up on November 14th at 7 p.m. You do have to have your bikes lit up to participate. It will be a night ride. And then finally, I would, I'm would i ecstatic to inform the community that on Saturday, December the 15th, I am hosting my very first, which will be an annual, Community Health Summit here at the City of Westland. And that health summit is going to offer free medical treatment and testing to the community free of charge. There will also be a complimentary lunch for anybody who's able to make it out. Um, the health screenings and testings will include uh, uh, flu shots, uh, diabetes screening, eye screening, just to name a few. And um, we have multiple health systems that have committed to coming in and providing those services. 
Uh, just to name a few, Beaumont will be here, St. Joe Hospital, and Oak Street Health. And that is just uh, a few. Um, so again, Saturday, December the 15th, if you are interested, uh, it is going to be from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. here at City Hall. And again, everything is free of charge, so please tell a friend. If you uh, would like more information, you can find it on my Facebook page at Councilwoman Tasha Green on Facebook. Or you can uh, contact me directly at area code 734-828-7010 for more information, 734-828-7010. Thank you very much. Councilman Hammonds. Hey, Council President, uh, I just wanted to, um, again, thank our State Representative Robert Kozowski for all of his work here in the uh, this city, in the city of Wayne. Uh, it seemed like every time you turned around, he was bringing a check home to us. They were big checks. So I just want to thank him again for his service. He's going to be missed here. Um, I just want to wish uh, the city clerk's office, all of your staff tomorrow, best of luck. Thank you. And that's it for me tonight. Thank you. Councilman Hart. Thank you. Uh, as a reminder, again, everybody, go out and vote. If you don't go out and vote, you don't get to complain, as they say. So some of us love to complain, so just vote and goes along with it. Then you're allowed to complain. Um, thanks uh, to the entire administration, mayor's office, and everybody for all the work they did in that Halloween event. I was here, too, handing out candy all night. My, my wife and my kids, uh, that, that was a lot of candy we handed out, and we saw a lot of kids. So it was a, a really fun event here at City Hall, and I know the administration put in a lot of work decorating this place. I didn't think it could look that cool in such a short amount of time, so they did a fantastic job. So please uh, extend my thanks again, Mr. Mayor. I appreciate it. Um, uh, thanks to Bob Kozowski, as uh, Councilman Hammond said and others have said, he did a fantastic job. He brought home the bacon to the city of Westland, and he's always worked really hard for all of us, so I'd like to thank him for all of his years of service. I'm pretty sure this isn't the last we've seen of him. Uh, Mr. Lussenden, welcome. Uh, congratulations on your promotion. Uh, thanks for clearing up the little thing in your resume. I looked at it too and uh, thought, oh, I was missing a piece here, but uh, that makes sense. Uh, I also noticed a long list of uh, licenses and certifications you did have on the bottom, so pretty impressive, sir. You definitely have a large body of work and experience to back it up. Uh, and the last thing I'll say, uh, Veterans Day, this Sunday. Um, remember Veterans Day, all of you. Call up a veteran. Thank them. Memorial Day is the time where you uh, remember those who've given and uh, lived the ultimate sacrifice and put it down for all of us. Veterans Day is the day that us vets kind of like to, where you buy us a beer and thank us for our service, and we're usually pretty good about it. So there's two veterans in this room. I won't call them out, but you guys know who you are. Thank you for your service. I appreciate it. Uh, and that's it. Thank you. Thanks. Councilman Johnson. Thank you. Uh, first of all, Keith, congratulations on your appointment. Um, I'll probably be a pain in the neck to you because I was to Bruce, but uh, uh, congratulations. Welcome aboard. Uh, response to Mrs. McKinney's uh, statement. Do we know if the city has notified the newspaper that they can no longer throw this stuff out on the drive driveways? I don't know. If we haven't, we certainly should by tomorrow morning uh, because she's not kidding. They're still throwing them all over the place. Uh, and, and I think they fully intend to keep doing that. Um, I'm going to ask the city attorney, and, and can we attach some, some monetary penalties to this? Because they're going to continue it. Uh, they're not going to stop. Yeah, the ordinance does have some enforcement requirements, but it would start with notifying the uh, ONI in this instance of the uh, existence of the ordinance. City clerk, I know you're going to be busy tomorrow, but I think that comes under your uh, bailiwick. I'd appreciate it once you get the election behind if you could notify the newspaper of the ordinance, I'd appreciate it. Thank you, sir. That's all of course, I have. If I may. Sure. We, we published the ordinance as required by our charter and other provisions, but uh, you know we'll reach out independent of that to allow those folks to know. We'll communicate that to other offices, ordinance and the mayor's office. Well. I appreciate it because I don't believe they're going to stop unless we stop them. <clears throat> Councilman Londo. Thanks, President Gabba. I want to start off by welcoming both Greg Elliott and Keith Lustenden and congratulate you both on your roles with new roles with the city of Westland. You both have incredible resumes and professional experience that are going to serve our residents well in the future. I'm looking forward to working with both of you. And I also have to thank Bob Kozowski as well for his dedicated service to the city, not only as a former employee, but the six, six years he served in the state legislature. 
legislature, legislature, I can't even say it. Um, this district's been incredibly, uh, um, we've seen a lot of progress under his leadership and he'll be greatly missed. And uh, his campaign slogan, I always tease him about it was, let me work for you. He sure did work for us and I really appreciate everything he's done for us. Um, the mayor mentioned the visioning sessions that we had over the weekend for the new city center. Uh, they were last weekend over the weekend. I thought they were very informative. I'd like to thank uh, the city administration, Charles House, Mayor Wild, and the economic development team, as, as well as uh, Gibbs Planning Group and McKenna and Associates for their tireless efforts working with the administration and various stakeholders and, of course, the public. Uh, I personally spent close to, I don't know, 10 to 12 hours over those three days working with the team to help shape the plan for the future of our city. I appreciate everybody that took the time to offer input, and you can still provide input as well. I'm sure we're going to have some boards up here at City Hall to be able to provide, provide input if you weren't able to over those three days. I uh, just got a couple more things. Uh, last week, the Westland Firefighters Public Awareness Committee held a flash fire $10,000 giveaway, and they were able to raise over nearly about $15,000 for their charity. I was proud to assist with the efforts, and I'd like to thank all those that volunteered, uh, donated, or supported the cause in any way, and I know they're looking forward to next year already to making it bigger and better and raising more money for our community. Uh, the mayor mentioned the Harvest Festival. I thought it was incredible. It was a packed house in Norway on October 20th, and then they also had the Norway Historic Hall of Fame induction ceremony and volunteer appreciation dinner. I was able to MC that event and I thought that was a good event as well. As far as the two plans that we approved tonight, the MERS pension plan and the OPEB, uh, we had a study <coughs> session. I want to start off by thanking the finance team who met with me. I met for about an hour with uh, Dan Block, so I appreciate you taking the time to meet with me and then offering up over an hour and a half of the study session. So uh, I had some questions that they were able to answer. You know, I was kind of wondering about, you know, if the, the, if the, if the plan is enforced by the state and then also can the council make changes down the road? I had some other questions, but they were able to answer those. And I appreciate that. And then as Councilwoman Green uh, mentioned, it's an exciting time for our community. The Westland Youth, Af Westland Youth Athletic Association has four out of the six teams playing in this weekend's uh, Western Suburban Junior Football League Super Bowl. The undefeated Junior Varsity Westland Comets are facing off against their rivals, the Junior Varsity Westland Meteors. And then the Meteors have two other teams in there as well, the freshmen and the varsity. So. Um, great representation. To put that into context, there's about 30 teams that are represented, and we have four of the six teams that are remaining, so that's great. Um, the games, if you like to go, the games are going to be at Edsel Ford High School in Dearborn this Sunday, November 11th, and it's, the games start at 11 a.m., uh, Freshman Meteors versus Kent Lions, and then 1 p.m. will be the city championship rematch between the Comets, undefeated Westland Comets, and the one-loss Westland Meteors at 1 p.m., and then the final game will be the 3 p.m. game with the varsity Westland Meteors taking on the Kent Lions. And as Councilman Hart said, uh, Veterans Day is also this Sunday, so please take this opportunity to honor our military veterans who gave the ultimate sacrifices, including our very own Councilman Hart, and then Dan Stachow's in the audience as well. I'll go ahead and name you guys. And then good luck to the city clerk's office as well as all of our elected officials, or elected election workers and all those running in the election. And then lastly, Council President, I just wanted to mention um, our planning commissioner, Deborah Folk's mom passed away over the weekend, so I'll just ask for the uh, community's prayers and support. Thanks. Councilman Hersberg. Thank you. I think when most people think of Westland, they don't, they don't think of it uh, as a place to be for Halloween, but somehow this year we just went over the top. Uh, we had 3,000 kids, as they said, come through City Hall, do the trick-or-treating. Uh, the Eloise tours were just one of a kind. I don't know if anybody here took the tour or knew somebody that did, but there were some pretty creepy pictures they showed on the news. It really creeped me out, that's for sure. And on top of that, I, I want to congratulate Cody Bailey, who's the owner of Hush. He was named, uh, or Hush was named the best haunted house in Michigan, and that's on Ford Road. So congratulations to uh, Cody Bailey. Uh, I want to take a moment just to invite everybody, Sunday, Veterans Day, uh, November 11th at 2 p.m., we're having the uh, Veterans Day ceremony at the Veterans Memorial Garden. It's at the library. You use the Central City entrance as you're going to the library, but you go around to the back. That's going to start at 2 o'clock, and uh, this year is the centennial for the World War I, where 116,516 U.S. soldiers died from combat and disease. Another 200,000 were wounded, and it, would, it had a far greater casualty rate than World War II. So if uh, everybody could come out and join us on Veterans Day to honor all those who served. And uh, lastly, I know the clerk wants to get out of here, but regarding the newspaper ordinance, um, it's not just the Westland Observer, it's the Free Press, it's another ad company, it's different companies all over town, so if you do plan on sending out any notices this week, if you can make sure you cover the... Uh, we published the ordinance. In a newspaper. In a newspaper. <laughs> as, as required by the ordinance and the charter. Well, that's it for me. Thanks.
I'd like to uh, start by thanking uh, Amelia Rawls, the uh, young lady from Hamilton Elementary that led us in the Pledge of Allegiance this evening. I too would like to uh, congratulate Keith on uh, becoming our new building director, as well as Craig Brown for, uh, you know, stepping in as the, was the previous the interim IT director and now he's the, uh, uh, now he's got all the blame. So it's, uh, uh, but it's both are, are well-deserved uh, promotions and uh, we look forward to working with you moving forward. Uh, I too would like to congratulate the WYAA as uh, Councilman Landau mentioned, uh, having four teams out of six in the Super Bowl is a tremendous feat and it just shows the, uh, the hard work and dedication that uh, a lot of volunteers do to uh, put those programs together. And uh, they, they work hard, uh, those kids are great kids, and it's uh, well-deserved. So uh, uh, congratulations to uh, WYAA and the, the meteor, three Meteor teams and the, uh, the JV Comets team for uh, moving forward into the Super Bowl. And then uh, uh, SEMCOG, the Southeastern Michigan Council of Governments, uh, is looking for input from the residents to help in the development of their long-range transportation plan. And a public input meeting is scheduled on Tuesday, December 11th from 4 to 7 p.m. here at City Hall so that the residents can share their feedback on policies and actions related to the transportation system. So this is a, a wide-ranging overall plan for uh, future transportation needs uh, within all of the, the Southeast Michigan uh, region. So uh, please uh, take some time and think about it. And if you're available, come and provide your input to that, uh, to that uh, uh, forum. And with that, is there a motion to adjourn?